Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is Saturday, June the 29th, 2019. Let's talk about the IBF lightweight championship fight that just took place between Richard Kami and Ray Beltran. Right? First, let me just say, Kami from Africa fights out of the Bronx. I just want to give a little shout out here. I went to high school in the Bronx. I just want to give a little shout out here to the African boxing community in the Bronx. Right? Understand, you've had guys like Joshua Clotty, Joseph Agbeko come out of the Bronx. Now you have Richard Kami. People need to understand that New York City is an immigrant city. And you have boxing communities in New York City that, quite frankly, the powers that be in boxing need to make a note of, need to scout, need to recruit, need to develop. Right? Richard Comey from the Bronx, New York, by way of Africa, his trainer is Andre Rosier, the trainer of Danny Jacobs. Right? Now, let me just say this. Kami is the... IBF lightweight champion. He successfully defended his title against Ray Beltran. Let me also say this. For those of you into the mechanics of boxing, Timothy Bradley, the announcer, had about as good a day as an announcer can have broadcasting a fight. I thought he was excellent. Now, a lot in this fight happened before the fight. Ray Beltran had problems making weight. Now that's a big problem when you're facing a puncher because your punch resistance gets impacted. So Beltran has a problem making weight. He comes out in the first round and Bradley is on it on the telecast. In the first round, he clearly has a problem, clearly, with Kami's punching power right? Just can't handle it. Certainly cannot handle Kami's right hand, right? And Kami is throwing it to big effect, so he knocks down Beltran. Beltran is so, we'll call it mentally unprepared, to be hurt that early in the fight, that when he gets off the canvas, folks, he looks like Keith Thurman looked in the seventh round against Jose Cito Lopez. In other words, he can't even clinch Kami. Think about it. You go down, you get up, you're not right, your head is spinning, it's early in the fight, the other guy's operating at 100% power, right? The fight hasn't gone on long enough for his stamina to drop, and Beltran just gets battered, right? Battered in that first round. Let me say this too. I viewed Kami as a fastball pitcher. In other words, I thought his right hand, it's a right hook, he throws up top and down low. I thought that was really the big part of his game. Right? I thought that if a fighter could neutralize that right hand they would have success. I wasn't alone. Ray Beltran seemed to think that too. So Beltran gets drilled by a left, not a right. <laughs> a left for the second knockdown. Right? Let me give Kami credit too. Right? The last knockdown of the fight, several rounds later. Beltran seems to have figured out that Kami needs you at mid-range. In other words, what Beltran should have been doing was either being episodic in the pocket as his trainer, Freddie Roach, discussed before the fight. In other words, against a puncher like Kami, you can't stay in the pocket. You need to be out here, right? And then jump into the pocket, not give Kami an opportunity to throw big shots, get Kami on his back foot, and then get out of the pocket. Well, Beltran also figured out that if he got deep in the pocket, 
inside of Kami's preferred mid-range punching style, since Kami is a bit of a wide puncher, Beltran could have success. So Beltran actually does come back in the fight. But then what happens the last round is, of course, he makes the mistake. He has the right hand blocked. So Kami, of course, drops him with a left hand that's beautiful, especially from a right-hand dominant fighter. Let me say this, too. When Beltran gets off the canvas, I believe the referee made a mistake. This fight was stopped prematurely. I understand Beltran hit the canvas multiple times, but there's a space between the knockdowns, right? Several rounds before that last knockdown. So, I believe when the referee says to a fighter, walk to me, and the fighter walks to the ref, the ref says, are you okay to fight? And the fighter says, yeah, I'm okay. Why ask the question? If after the guy says, yeah, I'm okay, you stop the fight. Understand, too, this fight's different than the Anthony Joshua fight. Joshua, terrible body language, right? He's leaning on the ropes after one of the knockdowns, has his hand on the top rope. You know, the ref says, walk to me, walk to me. Joshua moves, you know, slightly. Here, I thought Beltran, who, again, had made adjustments. In other words, he's blocking that right hand. He's operating deep in the pocket. He's not hanging around mid-range in the pocket, where Comey's having success. Right? I thought Beltran had made adjustments. Understand, too, Beltran's a former champion himself. So Beltran has really the last third of the fight to make his case. Kami, of course, has lost two previous fights. Granted, they were both by split decision. But it's not like Beltran was fighting an unbeaten dominant fighter. Right? Also, let's be real here. Kami just got his title. Right? Just got his title. He's not a long reigning champion. So sure, Beltran gets dropped off a left hand, right? When he gets up, I thought he was responsive to the referee. I thought the referee should have thought to himself, well, Beltran in rounds four, five, six, seven, he's been making adjustments. He's been coming back in the fight, right? The fight was not unwinnable at that point. Let me just digress for a second, right? I thought the ref should have let the fight continue. Let me just digress for a, um, a second, and let me just say, in fights like this, you always want to ask yourself, what did Beltran do wrong? Right? The first thing is the weight issue. If you're fighting a guy who doesn't hit hard, okay, your punch resistance isn't that significant. Against a hard-hitting guy like this, Beltran should have understood, I need to make 135 comfortably. I can't be here missing weight and then not even making an attempt to make weight. Right? Bel Beltran should have known better. Right? Kami is a puncher. Then in the first round, if you're fighting a guy, think Danny Garcia, who can throw that hook low and can throw that hook up top, and it's his dominant punch. Right, then what you want to do is to take away one of them, don't you? Take away the mystery of whether the punch is coming high or low by hiding your body. How do you do that? By leaning forward. The only part of Ray Beltran that should have been vulnerable to getting hit with that right hook from Kami should have been his head. Beltran should have been leaning. Right? The only part of his body, he should have taken away the body part of the right hook from Kami. Instead, Beltran, and this is why centers of gravity are very important. Guys who can't fight out of a crouch are at a disadvantage against hookers like this. Right? Beltran is standing too upright. Right? He doesn't bend enough. 
You would have thought he was Anthony Joshua. He was standing so upright. Okay. I digress. But he's standing upright. So, of course, when Kami throws the punch and hits him up top, it hurts him. When he throws the punch to Beltran's body, Beltran's body is there to be hit. It hurts him. It's, it creates a defensive mystery. Rather than leaning forward and then having a hand up to block headshots, Beltran's back like this, so he's getting hit with headshots and body shots. Let me say this too. When Beltran gets hurt, I'm shocked that you're fighting a puncher and you aren't prepared to clinch him. I mean, he's just straight getting battered. Right? If you're not going to clinch, please don't go to the ropes. Try to just run away from the guy. Understand, too, the beating Beltran takes early in this fight, getting dropped twice. Unfortunately, that, I'm sure, creates a bad impression with the judges. Right? You're the challenger fighting the champ. The champ comes out and drops you twice. You don't want judges getting in a habit. You don't want judges saying, that's the champ's round, that's the champ's round. Wow, this challenger is really going to have to show me something to win the belt here. Right? Beltran should have, in the first round, figured out the angles. On film, he should have known that Comey needs some space to throw punches. I understand film is different than being in the ring. So that's why in the ring, you know Comey has a really good right hand. You know that. So Beltran should have come out that first round, especially since Kami's a puncher, and should have thought to himself, okay, I'm going to block this punch. I'm going to have defense up. If you can't figure out the angle, then what you want to do is to protect parts of your body. In other words, if I'm having a problem tracking the punch, then what I need to do is to say, well, where am I vulnerable? Temple, chin. Right? Let me either put a hand up like this, or let me have my hand up like this. And I'm certainly going to be bent, and I'm certainly going to be moving. Right? I thought Beltran really wasn't completely ready for this fight, and it cost him. Standing too upright in the first round, gets hit at mid-range. What's that about? by a mid-range hooker, right? Comey first drops him with his signature right hook. You're supposed to take away the other guy's plan A. Now, I'll give Comey credit for the left-handed knockdowns, right? Obviously, Comey is more than just a fastball pitcher, right? He has a left hand. He can land it with accuracy. The last knockdown, beautiful. Right? But let's just say that Beltran wasn't really elusive, wasn't really ready. Right? The weight deprived him of the punch resistance, and he was in Kami's power zone. He's getting hit with Kami's best punches early. Timothy Bradley spells it all out on the telecast, talks about losing weight, punch resistance, uh, inability to tie up Kami. Uh, the entire fight. Don't just look at the highlights because the highlights are deceiving. I'm telling you, Beltran makes adjustments after a disastrous first part of the fight. He makes adjustments. Right? If you see all the highlights together, it's going to look like he got battered. Then the ref said, that's it, I've had enough. Right? The ref, in my opinion, should not have stopped this fight. Beltran who does have his bell rung when he gets dropped that last time, does get off the canvas and is responsive to the referee and to me, based on the performance leading up to that part, deserved the opportunity to continue, especially since when he got inside, deep in the pocket on Kami, inside Kami's punch, right? Because Kami needs leverage 
to throw that right hand, I thought Beltran had a lot of success. Anyway, the whole fight is in my favorites folder. Uh, Kami wants to fight uh, Vasil Lomachenko. Ooh, I have to say, the stuff I'm talking about here, hiding your body, being able to bend at the waist, being able to move so you're not in the pocket, you're outside the pocket, and then to be episodic, Right? I think Vasil Lomachenko would beat Kami. I'll concede. Kami hits harder than Vasil. Right? But understand, Lomachenko very good inside. If Lomachenko gets inside, deep in the pocket, to smother Kami, like Beltran does at times in this fight, I think it's going to be a bad visual. I don't think Kami is that good when a guy is up on him. Right? I think if you look on tape, you know 80% of Kami, even though he gets two knockdowns here with left hands, 80% of Kami is that right hand. And if you can block that right hand and prevent him from throwing it to your body, right? I think you can beat this fighter. Anyway, that's how I see it. Successful defense of the IBF lightweight title by Richard Kami. He wants Lomachenko. There are a lot of other names out there as well. He's definitely a fighter to watch. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.